Welcome back, friends, and welcome to part two of Catamaran versus Monohull. We have still with us our friends of Yacht Ruby Rose, Nick and Teresa, and we're going to be tackling comfort and safety are our topics today while having a, I'm, I think this is a French beer and we're in French Polynesia, so there you go. Yeah, we'll let Jen, we'll Jen let, Lane Ombre. Yeah, we'll let Nick do the interpret of what all this means because otherwise you and I will butcher it. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, we'll let Jason do it for fun. So it is the uh, the, the flavor, taste. the undeniable taste. taste of Jen Lane, aromatic and malty. There's nothing to change, just savor it. An original recipe created in 1922 by my father. father and who who had a good ride he hadn't didn't <laughs> robert duck the third three generations of brazzers of jane lane so yes three so generations yes. of beer 7.5 percent amber that's what you need to know yeah 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 it's a good day another good day uh, yeah it's nice. nice i like that yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's light. It's not. I expected seven and a half percent. That's pretty light. Expected even more. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Last time we talked about price. Price. Yep. And performance. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, there's a video link <laughs> somewhere on the screen. <laughs> One of the corners. Yeah. No one can ever figure out yeah. which corner. Yeah. <laughs> so starting off with safety, because this is something we do and don't talk a lot about. On I think for us. And I know you guys have maybe covered it a little bit yeah. more. So if you were do. just to look at our channel side by side, the way that we do crossings, people would think that we never do anything And we're terribly safe. unsafe and irresponsible. And, and you they... would think, oh, they're clipped in all the time and they've got life vests on. So I think just judging, I mean, we've sailed your boat now. So we've yeah. sailed on your boat in seas that were probably, I would say, when it was at its worst, three to four feet. Yeah. With a, probably an eight to 10 second swell period. Yeah. So quite choppy. The thing is, um, you have a fully enclosed cockpit. So I'm not saying that you would never clip on, but you would probably clip on later. The choosing to put on your life vest is a personal choice, but it also is very dependent on the conditions. Yeah. So your conditions warrant how safe you're going to be. The rougher your seas get, the more intense <clears throat> you're going to get with your safety protocol. I think that's just natural. Absolutely. And, and at the point at which you clip on is really different. I think if you split this into two different things, First, it would be clipping on in the cockpit. Yep. I think with our monohull, the way it's set up with our cockpit tent, we clip on immediately because there is a slim chance, day and night, that you could get a freak wave. Yep. With yours, yep. I would, even I, who is like, literally, I'm like, you're such, people on, like, so many injuries, like, you're such a pussy. <laughs> I would clip on later if we had your butt. Beep. Yeah. <laughs> Nick. Not, pussy's just a small cat, right? <laughs> And, and this, to, be, to clarify, this is really in relation to ocean sailing. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we have a different attitude when we're coastal cruising yeah. because obviously the stakes are slightly lower. You know, when you're out in the middle of the ocean, a thousand miles from the nearest port, it's going to take days for anyone to get to you. You know, then there's, you know, you're not within helicopter range. Then you have to be kind of really have a high threshold of yeah, yeah what yeah. You. If you've got two knots of wind and you're in you're in flat calm. You, something, you literally something crazy, like so unlikely would have to it happen. It could happen. Like I could get pulled out by the spinnaker reopening in a, a random well, gust or something. We, we all but, make risk determinations. And it. It's like tossing yeah. a coin yeah. and it landing on its side. It could theoretically happen, yeah. but it's going to be heads or tails. It's more right. likely to happen on a monohull. Far, oh, more likely. Sure. Far more likely. To get hit oh, and to do this Absolutely. much more than a catamaran. Because if it gets hit from the side, it's just going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. But Plus, in the same way, sorry, Tommy. In the same way that we have a standing rule that if someone goes forward or leaves the cockpit, um, they get the other person up to do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, never 100%. go forward. Yeah, we yeah. do the same. So, you know, we are all safety conscious. We all, I don't think that, I and mean, when we've talked, you know, from different sides of the world, in different boats, I think we all have the same standard of safety. I don't think, I mean, literally, there's nothing I've thought, actually, that I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Having sailed this boat for now a week, I, I I would change nothing from what the way, the way you did things. Here's your $10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, so okay. Okay. We're just okay. Yeah. okay, so after being on our boat for a week, would you say that 
has that changed your perspective on like a man overboard drill? Do you think it would be any easier or harder on mono versus cat? And I, th I do think the catamaran um, does give you a really key advantage in that you have so much space to work in yeah. and it's easy to move around the boat. I was going to say, I do feel like our maneuverability really helps absolutely. in that yeah. department so it, uh, because we can corkscrew, we can right. turn around. Abs like Absolutely. And you can imagine on a healing mono hull, you know, you don't have that ability to turn just like on yeah. your, your center yeah. point and you are potentially healed over. I mean, you know, a mm -hmm. man overboard situation will probably happen in fairly rough seas. Yeah, so, so you, you could be doing this number as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I think that just that inherent difference will make, just the stabilization and the space that you get in a catamaran will make that inevitably incredibly stressful situation a little less easier stressful from a log yeah. logistic point of view. I'm not sure mm -hmm. and I literally as I'm thinking I have you know this is the first time we, 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 yeah. know, we, yeah. we, we haven't had this discussion yeah. yet. We, so yeah, yeah, we so don't yeah. preload the questions. My, my, I'm a mono, we come from a mono background and we are mm -hmm. looking to a catamaran but my worry would be that we understand that our boat can deal with all sea states and if yeah. she's knocked down she'll come back up and my worry would be that if you were, say for instance, you were doing a massive downwind sail in really big following seas. In big yeah. seas, it would be, yeah. And then you had to turn beam on in yeah. this. Yeah, that's dangerous. That, would, that is yeah. dangerous that's in a That's the one thing you want, don't ever want to do in a catamaran. Yeah. And, and sometimes you have to do it. So yeah. I think that you change very one problem move. with yeah. another, another problem. Yeah. And I that's think, very true. Mm. And so, yes, I think what you said is absolutely correct, that there are so many, we do this so infrequently. That you can practice and do drills and do drills. I hope it never happens to us. Yeah, in yeah. reality, like, yeah. in reality. Yeah. So, in reality, catamaran versus monohull. I think it it feels a little bit like a crapshoot because again, it's going to yeah. depend on conditions yes. and everything else. So, 100%, like, I'm on the on the boat, like, because if I know some of those monoholes, they're like they're so tall, eight feet yeah. out of the water. So, and how are you some gonna... of the catamarans are exactly Absolutely. the same way. Yeah. They're huge. They're way the heck up yeah. there. We're in an older boat, so it's a little bit lower. Yeah, that... I would say. You know, we ended up choosing a catamaran overall because we felt like long run, it was better livability for us, but also it was a huge safety factor of that extra learning curve and that extra fatigue and getting bashed around and everything else. So all of that played into our decision to eventually buy the catamaran that we're in. But you've been in a monohull for a long time. You love your boat. It's a mm -hmm. fantastic boat. It really is. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, no qualms against yeah. that whatsoever. But you are considering a catamaran, and now that you've been aboard, what is your take on like just general safety on passage and how that comfort plays into safety? Yeah, comfort well, and, and this is the thing: yeah. comfort does play into safety, as you just said. You know, the the more kind of comfortable and the more well rested you are, the less likely you are to make mistakes. And if you read any MIOB report it is almost always a catalogue of errors that lead to these disasters. It's very rarely just one problem that happens. It is always lots of little things that, that build up and then, you know, it all goes wrong. So, and, and one obvious issue there is, is fatigue and making poor decisions when lives could literally be at stake. So we've, we've talked about life vests, we've talked about MOB. Uh, you know, you might wear a life vest less on a, on a catamaran, I would say by a long shot, yep. versus mm -hmm. a monohull. But when it comes to MOB, you're kind of just, it's never a good situation. It's probably going to be crap all the yeah. way around. Yeah. doesn't really matter. You're not really on like a major advantage that either one of yep. us can see on one versus the other. Mm. So then let's talk about like flipping versus sinking. Yeah, the biggest yeah. thing that people said when we told yes. them we were going to buy a monohull, or not buy a monohull, yeah. they're like, oh, well, you're going to flip. Yeah. And then yeah. you can't recover from we that. We hear that a lot. Yeah. So we talk quite freely about the fact that we are looking to buy a separate boat or a different boat for, um, our future sailing adventures and uh, you know people tend to be in one of uh, either one camp camps, exactly yeah. you know they're either kind of thinking well yeah catamaran it makes perfect sense more space more comfort more whatever things that we're addressing right now and well, of course the other half are saying look you know if you're gonna do any kind of serious ocean sailing then why on earth would you ever consider a catamaran yeah. and I because one of the reasons is because the, they can flip over theoretically. Theoretically. Theoretically, yeah. they and, can. But monoholes can sink. Absolutely. Theoretically. Absolutely. My understanding, and I'm sure that if I'm incorrect, then we'll be told <laughs> <laughs> immediately. Yes, we will. But um, my understanding is that there haven't been any instances of cruisers like us in our situation um, flipping in a catamaran. 
Yeah, it's um, racers. It's, it's people racers who are pushing and it's the people, bosses, Absolutely, yeah. and it's people who might have full sails up in 30 knots of wind. Yeah. It's people who don't, you know, these instances where it does happen, you read about it and you realise that it's they've so made, rare. It's so rare, first so of all. Rare. So, yeah, so rare. Happened, and it yes. is user error. Yes. Yeah. Like it, big time. Big Major time. Mistakes. Yeah, you have to really yeah. work like a dog to flip this yeah. thing over. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Or make a big stupid mistake in yeah. 20 huge, foot season. Huge turn. mistake. Yeah, and be. like, yeah. So I'm not saying it's not possible. It's yeah. totally possible. Just like sinking your boat is totally possible. But even still, how many monoholes do you sink? Well, they not do. Not many. Well, they, they do. They do, but not, not that not, many. Not hugely. But all I would say is would I rather be on a flipped catamaran or a sinking monohull? Yeah. A flipped catamaran? Every day. And that's it. They are hugely unlikely I'm scenarios. still on top of the water, yeah, either absolutely. direction. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And nowadays with AIS and God knows what, you know, we, we, we always set mm-hmm. off with, yeah, AIS, EPIRBs, yeah. SATCOMs. Yeah. I would rather be on a, on a vessel that with is floating float. yeah. mm-hmm. and flipped yeah. than something. And, uh, and, and a tiny life raft. Than a tiny life raft. <laughs> yeah. This thing yeah. is massive. So either yeah. way, you still have a lot of function and you still have a lot of protection and you have something that's much bigger and easier to spot than a small life raft. Absolutely. All I would say is that the very act of flipping is obviously going to potentially put everyone in a huge amount of danger for sure so you could but same thing if it yeah. if you survive the flip gets, and you're still inside but even a monohull getting good. rolled is still like that's Absolutely. dramatic well it, you know and it does it will stay up won't it, it, it yes you're, 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 you should flip back up I, yes but i mean even still like even that act is yes. like yes. it can be perilous so you know it can that's knock right. somebody yeah, across you can the lose room. your rigging you can lose well, your mask oh, right yeah. but i mean so either way like you're going to be traumatized from that for experience sure. and you're definitely going to get knocked around no matter what but if your keel falls off or you got a major hole in your boat, mm-hmm. you, you're going down. Mm-hmm. So then you're stuck to your life raft. We feel like we have two things. We have the boat itself, which will still be floating, mm-hmm. and we have our life raft. Yeah. So we feel kind of like Absolutely. It's, it, it, yeah. it's double. Yeah. So I we feel like- We would never leave our catamaran if it was flipped. No, you stay with no. the boat. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yes. and it's the same with monohulls. The adage is you, you step up into a life raft. You have to literally be yeah. you know, sinking, sinking step up. to step up. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, they are hugely unlikely scenarios. I think really, that, you know, they did a lot of stuff in the yachting press about the likelihood of you hitting a container, yeah. because that's what people worry about. Are we yes. going to hit a container? Yeah. Are we going to hit a whale? whale. Thing? Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, and actually, someone on one of the it does the happen. Arts, it, it does happen. Yeah. But you know, I don't know. It, it, it's literally they're unlikely scenarios. They're what would you best? And mm-hmm. the other thing is, you have, you know, people. You re- we read a lot of things about what happened at sea. Most monoholes, one rudder. You lose a rudder, you've got another rudder. Yeah. yeah. You use one engine, you've got another engine. Yeah. yeah. And so. I actually do think, I and mean, pre- prior to coming on this, that catamarans are actually safe. Yeah. We think so, but that's why we bought one. <laughs> so, you know. And but our bulkheads, like if we hit reef with the front of our boat, it fills a bulkhead. It's like yeah. contained. You, you yeah. can still keep you're sailing. You're still going. But yeah. you're still, keep going. Even if you didn't have crash bulkheads, you've still got another hull. Yeah. yeah. And that, to me, is probably more important because the other thing is why you've got one hull working and one hull afloat, you've got one engine working and yeah. you're not flooding everything and then you can actually go down and fix other things. Yeah. Yeah. If you've only got one hull and you're sinking, yeah. you, you know, that's it. That's, that's it. it. And you think, okay, you know, if you're a thousand miles from land and you've still got one hull afloat, you're like, okay, look, we can't save this, but we're okay. That we're going to stay dry. We can mm-hmm. keep ourselves up. Even if you're flipped, you know, you've, you're going to be okay. Yeah. If it's it, EPUB goes on, EPUB goes off, and you go, fine, we will be picked up within a certain amount yeah, of time. Yeah, 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 totally agree. Anything else on cat versus mono <clears throat> as far as Say safety? That? Yeah, safety. I was going to say, we got one more topic. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're only halfway there. No, I, I, not that I, I, I as I said, you know, my conclusion on this is that on, in balance, cats are safer. Okay, so last subject is comfort. comfort. Okay, so our outside deck and storage area, I feel like, well, I don't know, like we won the lottery maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I feel like a catamaran has so much space between the trampolines and everything else, plus we've got these outside lockers. I feel like we have loads of outside space for lounging, whether you're in the cockpit or whether you're out on the trampolines, yeah. on the deck, whatever. I feel like there's there's so many places you could go. Oh, and the Utremeres we sailed that had like oh. a V-berth, like massive hatch going down into the V-berth to store sails and tools and lines. Yeah, so even from like cruising yeah. catamaran, which is totally what we have, to like a performance catamaran, I still feel like both had a lot of space and a lot of room when it, we're just talking about like outside and outside storage areas. So now, from a monohull perspective... Yeah, no we contest. don't have that. 
it is no contest. It is absolutely no contest. Like for like, spending the same amount of money on a monohull versus a catamaran, whether you had a, a you got a million for a monohull and a million for a catamaran, or five million for what? It, it's still no contest. Yeah. Your space and comfort is immeasurably better it, here on a catamaran. Yeah. On a, on a catamaran. Yeah. The, probably the only the exceptions you're going to find is if you're in really heavy seas and you've got like a boat which has got a, a monohull with like an encapsulated keel, nice kind of wine glass profile, kind of like really kind of like steep, yeah. uh, you know, bows and stern, canoe sterns, they are brilliant in really heavy seas. Yeah. They sit, they, they plow through, yeah. and that is where- We have heard that a lot, yeah. like they're super comfortable. Like a big swan or something? Like yeah, a big what, swan, yeah. the rustlers are like that, the kind of, even on a smaller level, the Contessa 32. Yeah. The 32 foot boat, you know, they are, they're Jeremy Rogers design like been going since the 60s they are if I want to go around the world in a 30 foot boat I'd go around <laughs> in one of those because yeah. they are they are super they have such fantastic sea capability and so comfort in really really heavy big seas I'd probably go with one of those monohull everything else you know there's no contest yeah. but then what about that boat at anchor yeah well that, this is it. <laughs> and, and how yeah and, and, and how is, many days do you spend in really heavy seas and how many days do you spend at anchor? It's well, how many, sorry. Yeah, well, as I say, you spend probably, we think that we spend about 90% of our time not sailing. So either yeah. at anchor or in, yeah. a, in a port or on a mooring or whatever. But yeah, only yeah. 10% and, of our time. But I think that goes back yeah. to that, that age old thing. Like you have to look at how do you plan to use this boat? Yeah. If you are in this for the love of sailing and you are going to be out to sea, day in and yeah. day out like that's your passion but then of course your boat yeah. choice is going to be drastically Absolutely. different yeah. but if you're looking at like this is my home and i move it from place to place it's just such a different mentality Absolutely. Yeah. and that's what we're both coming from so i think that is a huge 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 portion yeah, if you're on a mission to sail just around the world yeah that's like maybe well, a good a totally like a, different yeah, 60 boat foot choice. swan would be amazing yeah. you know yeah. but if you're going to just sail about the world just kind of as things happen and stop and stay long and time. slow travel mm -hmm. and slow living yep. and yep. really absorbing each place you come to that's such a different beast altogether. Yep. absolutely so okay so that's outside deck storage um and then getting on and off the boat monohull versus catamaran i do think that it's easier on the catamaran with the even like think about getting yeah. on and off from the dinghy yeah and it, like swimming off of the boat all of those kinds of things yeah i mean depends on the boat yeah it does depend on the boat we are getting on and off our boat is actually relatively easy because you okay. have a low yeah yeah we have like that's right we have kind like of a step. flat transom we have yeah. steps that lead up and and it is actually quite, so easy. A lot quite comfortable most, okay a lot of well a lot of mono uh, production monohulls now they've yeah. got swim platforms that drop down yeah. either hydraulically or otherwise so there's lots of i mean yeah so they've come of, leaps and bounds yeah. with that yeah. kind of stuff yeah and but the old like rustlers for instance it's very difficult to get onto a rustler or an oyster mm -hmm. yeah you know because you've got they they're, they're high so it, it's kind of very, i think generally with monohulls it depends on the monohull yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so getting on and off everyone's got their solutions and you yeah. see these huge super yachts that they've got like the monohulls they've got like ladders that come down the yeah, side yeah, yeah. or plat little bits that pop out or like fender steps which yeah yeah kind of so there's, there's always well. and there's usually a solution yeah yeah. I just remember unloading groceries with a few monoholers and helping them, like from the dinghy, picking up these big jugs of water, <laughs> oh. you know, way in the dinghy, yeah. Yeah. holding we're, them up, and they're over the lifelines, yeah. bending down, like all, like to the max. Like we're yeah. both stretched out as far as we can. So, haul, uh, and we are specifically thinking of you, Skeleton Crusader, <laughs> and the old lady. Yeah. Or even some guys. of the super fancy ones with the like beautiful, sleek, like. The yeah. back end that goes just down. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, for those guys, I mean, they're luckily they're fit, you mm -hmm. know, veterans. So, I mean, they were prepared for this. And it was like, yeah. it really wasn't a big deal for them. But I was thinking to myself, holy crap if i had to make water runs on my own on that boat i don't know that i'd ever make it back yeah. on the boat yeah. with, with the water five gallon jug of water. it was such a lift mm -hmm. up and then over and wow i mean that really that takes it to a whole nother level yeah look i don't think there's any doubt that i don't know i think if you had it, listen I, the, the longer i spend sailing the more i realize you have to pick the boat for the, what you're going to do almost immediately in the next couple of years mm -hmm. if you're going to sail the med and do one thing, you know, a swim platform, like the hydraulic swim platform on like you know, one of the production monohulls is perfect. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. You can get things on and off there. It's got like chocks for dinghies. You know, you can do all sorts of things yeah. with those. And it brings it level with catamarans. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm. Absolutely. Like Classic J class, try mm. get, you know, mm. try getting, you know, y y your apples up there. It's, it's hard. Mm. Yeah. 
but apples. you know, <laughs> obviously we just live on apples, like, <laughs> like a load of pigs. We just eat crab apples. That's what dinner's for tonight. Crab apple dinner. Salt, apples and bananas. That's all sailors live on. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So getting on and off the boat with newer boats, I totally agree. I think it's a wash. Yeah. I think yeah. back in the day it was probably a different yeah, story, sure. but now they're making them both so comfortable. Absolutely. It's kind of like Absolutely. it's a wash. Because mm -hmm. it's meant to make sailing kind of open to more people. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Easy. That's it. And uh, you know, yeah. inclusivity. Yeah. yeah. For sure. All right. So and that kind of covers like transferring water, groceries, yeah. and everything else, which mm -hmm. I had on here. All right, and then the last would, of course, be the inside space and, and comfort. And now I feel like this is a really good subject because, in general, we have a lot of space, and I love, like, our saloon area and everything like that. It's up, but I also feel like there is a lot of really great space in some monoholes, too. So I feel like inside, like, salon areas and galleys, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a wash because there are some great monohull designs that have some really nice areas but they're also down yes. lower so i like the fact that ours is up higher and then when it comes to the actual cabins i feel like we have so much separated space we have a lot of space we're not on top of each other yeah and then and then sleeping conditions but that's our experience and now you have so much experience on your monohull so now i'm curious to hear your perspective let's just make it easy like a budget of half a million dollars which i appreciate a lot of people as don't we, have as we all do yes, yes. i know but it, it, it yeah. kind of it kind of makes it a little bit easy because you can get for example and i do a lot of research on kind of what boats you can get for what price so you can get for example like say a 10 to 15 year oyster 53 which i think it is a british built um Yacht. Great boat, yeah. Great yep. boat, really kind of good pedigree, known for its kind of blue water cruising yeah. abilities. Solid boat. And if we were to look for a monohull to circumnavigate or to go cruising like to remote places, we'd probably be looking at oysters, mm -hmm. you know, to begin with. Anyway, um, so you could get like a 10 to 15 year old oyster, 53 ish, or you could look at something like a kind of 43 to 44 foot newer catamaran. Mm -hmm. But if you actually look at, which has its own pros and cons, obviously. But if you actually look at the um, spaces that you get within those two types of boats, you actually, surprisingly, they're kind of on par, depending on what space you value. So obviously, cockpit area is a lot less, even on a 50 to 50, probably a 50 to 60 foot on a hull. Yeah. You, they almost always have these center cockpits, and they're always going to be small, like, really small it's kind of intentional that's intentional partly yeah. intentional because you know the whole idea of it in a cockpit is that you kind of are kind of deep in the center of the boat and so at sea when you're you're not getting safe that's right yeah. exactly yeah. and it also gives you a big aft cabin and the cabins are another thing so you can get these huge aft cabins these master cabins on these larger and they are enormous and they like are king huge. size beds absolutely there. with loads There's of, loads of room to walk around that's and make right. your bed yeah, yeah. 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 you kind of walk around you've got loads of storage <laughs> And an entire jacuzzi as well. And you know, you've got these big um, heads with, you know, separate shower stalls and like your washing machine. So you've got loads of room. Your galley, they often come with like a linear galley. It's probably bigger than your galley. Your yeah, galley's totally. Like quite large, especially compared to ours, but it's bigger really yeah. when you think yeah. about how many cupboards you've got, you know, the size of the, the oven that you can get. Um, and the saloon, again, like you get these huge, huge. amazing saloons. But as you say, it depends on what you value. And we value outdoor space because of course we're spending like 90% of our waking hours outside. And you're not running the AC 90% of the time anyway. So, so it's sure. cooler to be yeah. up versus down. For sure. And that's the other con consideration is ventilation because I promise you, I never appreciated this until I went to the tropics. Ventilation is probably under safety, like the <laughs> most important thing that I think about when I think about which boat to buy next. Yeah. Being comfortable. So yeah, yeah I, I actually, uh, you know, you always think, well, cat equals more space. But not always. But not always. Interior space, mm -hmm. I sometimes think that a monohull, a really good laid out monohull, beamy, yeah. beamy monohull is amazing. Yeah. Your, your interior space can be fantastic. Yeah. You can put a lot of people in there. But cockpit, yeah, outside space, I think is a little bit different. I would say that the newer, um, the newer catamarans that are coming out. So I think of like, say, for example, the newer lagoons that have these huge hulls with these island island beds, and they've got the whole owner's hull with like, you know, these walk-through kind of shower rooms. I mean, 
you can't get past that yeah. when it comes Those to... Those are floating apartments. Yeah. They're really, like, they're basically houses yeah. that float. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, they they, feel, they they kind of serve a purpose and, totally. look, you know... They can sail. They can sail. sail yeah, you can put the sails up and they'll go. Yeah. I think the, the, so, the, the thing that's getting away from us in this is that you choose a boat for the journey that you're going to do. Right. And, and really, this boat is perfect. There, there's nothing that fills all the criteria. Yeah. Like... No. If I wanted to go high latitude sailing, mm -hmm. In any capacity, this would, would not be I, I'd buy a monohull because yeah. it's yeah. down low. You get a heater in it, you know, and they're built for that. These boats, these catamarans, are <laughs> they're, they're built for the tropics. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, it's if you want a lot of air and you want the comfort of air and being able to cool things down without and, and running AC outside, yeah. and spend lots of time outside, this is perfect. Yeah. yeah. If you want to go up to the Arctic, why would you go to the Arctic? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and you want to kind of, you see these amazing photographs and drones where like someone's like just kind of like attacked you know, and get like, next to an iceberg to an iceberg <laughs> yeah, yeah. right all right but in all fairness like i would yeah. love to do actually like extreme latitudes yeah. like we've we, discussed this yeah we can like, up for yeah. it yeah who crew a girl's boat <laughs> you, and go. going, you and i are going to vietnam <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But we would, we would totally go, and, but our choice would absolutely probably be a yeah, monohull. We wouldn't go with a cataract. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think, and that is... Or a trawler sort of thing. Right. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like that is what brings it all back around. Like everybody always wants like a definitive answer mm -hmm. of which boat is yeah. better, a catamaran or a monohull. And the problem is, it, there isn't both. One. There isn't one. Absolutely. It's, it's, not. it's not, it's dependent on how you want to travel, where you're going, how fast you're going to go. Like there's so many in intentions behind what you're going to do and what boat matches that. And all I would say, and you know, this sounds like a bit of a cop out, but honestly, like you're in the same anchorage, you're going to the same places. It doesn't matter. You're kind of, you know, having the same sundowners, you're doing the same tough hikes that we yeah. did today. You know, you're still living the cruising life mm -hmm. and whether you choose catamaran or monohull. 10,000 or half a million. It absolutely. Doesn't matter. Same There's pros absolutely. and cons for both. Yeah. And you know, what one lacks the other one, you yeah. know, it yeah. has absolutely. an advantage of. So, absolutely. you know, I don't want to say like there's no answer, but there really, there really is no answer. Yeah, like because an it's going to be so personalized. Yes. That's the way every catamaran versus monohull video ends. Yeah, I sucks. know. Which is not. <laughs> I just like the way anybody. that Pat said it because he's like, you know what? <laughs> Let's just say a catamaran, it, anybody who can a afford a catamaran is going to buy a damn catamaran. Well, all yeah. I would say everybody is that who can't yeah. is going to just bitch about it. He's referencing Pat of yeah. a yeah. bum puzzle, and he did this debate yeah, with eons ago because they have sailed also in both a catamaran and a monohull, and he did an excellent thing. I'll make sure. Like it's it. true and totally not true at the same time, yeah. but I'm like, hey, he just it's, said that. That's an answer. Yeah, there you <laughs> it go. Is an answer. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But I also feel like at the end of the day, too, and he also says this yeah. at the end of his debate. Yeah. Another like pat on the back for Pat Allen is if buying a catamaran means you go three years from now, don't buy a catamaran. Yeah. Yes. If you can go now, and that means buying a monohull, go find a boat in your budget and your go. Like, at the end of the day, no matter what, you're still out sailing. Absolutely. There's no mistake in that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. You know? Okay. He's been jealous about a couple of things that I just want quickly, very quickly. <laughs> we're probably running out of time. Every time I open the anchor locker, he's like, oh my God, you have so much storage. But then also the dinghy. You mean the dinghy? The dinghy. <laughs> the dinghy. The real dinghy. The dinghy rib. How does that have anything to do? Because we put down the dinghy in like five seconds and he's like, All right, so holy crap. Well, uh, well monohulls do have davits. Yeah, so you Just not our monohulls. All I would say that in the week we've spent here, everything is a factor easier. Yeah. yeah. And we we know from the way this is set up and catarans are set up, like even the things we haven't seen, like raising a spinnaker, because you can like you yeah. run you know one corner Plus from each. Plus you've got so much space to move around getting, it. So everything is immeasurably easier, mm -hmm. and that that is is, is blindingly apparent. Yeah. So you're right, getting the dinghy down, getting the dinghy up, easier cooking, easier storage, easier deploying, weighing the anchor, easier. <laughs> it's all easier. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, there's no point in kind of like even trying to justify that monohulls are is easier. You know, the number of times we're kind of like, I mean, I remember when we were trying to get the anchor once. I don't know where we were. You ended up with a huge bruise. Oh yeah. So because you're always no, I was trying out. to pick up a mooring board. So. So but, yeah. it is invariably, e most things that we've seen on this are far easier. Mm -hmm. And my con my concluding statement is, which is kind of like, based on what you've said, everyone decides what cruising they're gonna do. And we made a mistake, which was probably naivety, where we just, we bought our forever boat. And we were like, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go the here, 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 and do all this stuff. And you don't have a forever boat. There's yeah. a boat that will yeah. take you realistically yeah. probably five years at most because you will change 
hugely as a, as a sailor and a human being yeah. in those five years. Yeah. And then you may buy a monohull and after five years go, yeah, we're gonna do another five years, we want another monohull. Yeah. So don't buy your forever boat, buy the boat's gonna suit you for five years, yeah. stay within your budget and try and enjoy it. Just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Yeah. You can find right. these guys at Yacht Ruby Rose. I will have probably already put links to all kinds of jazz by now, but definitely you can find it in the description box down below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching it on our website, then you'll definitely find links there. And uh, yeah, so check these guys out. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was semi-helpful. <laughs> and if you're still with us, you were very interested. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to you, but uh, yeah. Cheers. 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 Oh, sorry. <laughs> Drink Thanks, Jason. Guys. Jason just necked it all. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. Well, I mean, you know, I gave you more. <laughs> <laughs> so Actually, I'm barely so starting to give myself more. So selfish. So selfish. You can have a lovely shot of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Nick and Teresa documented their week with us over on their channel. So if you want to see what life aboard Curiosity is like from a couple of monohull loving but catamaran considering sailors, check them out. We may be biased, but we think it's binge worthy.